thought I'd do a little bit of test with over uh, overclocking and uh, water cooling. This is my first attempt with water cooling, and I picked up the Corsair H60 here just recently, August 2011. But I had a computer that was six years old and decided I was going to go ahead and build another one. Uh, pretty much just an office computer, no plans for major gaming or anything like that. And so what I've got is I've got a Athlon 2 X4645 going into an M4A88TD-V. Uh, Asus motherboard. Uh, it supposedly has overclocking capability. It comes with software for overclocking and I've got 8 gigabytes of dual channel uh, 2 times 4 gigabyte uh, Corsair 1600 RAM. Uh, mother, uh, I'm sorry, graphics card GE Force uh, GTX 550 Ti. Not a bad card I guess. And then the Momentus XT with the uh, 4 gigs of additional uh, RAM on there. I guess it's RAM. So anyway, so my original uh, uh, concerns were about where heat is actually coming from. And so I'm going to turn the light down a little bit on this so you can kind of see inside the computer. You got the Corsair uh, uh, cooling device there. Oh, by the way, I'm going to do the measuring with a Raytech ST60. Raytech ST60, which has a resolution of minus, I think, 25 degrees uh, Fahrenheit all the way up to 1400 plus. And that resolution is plus or minus 1%. And I've had it checked and it's well within that range. So um, that's what we're going to be using to test things out. So to start out, we check just the GPU and it's coming in at 33 Celsius. That's the GPU, as you can see right there. I'm just going to do the readings because it's too hard to go back and forth. You can see where the uh, where the light is there. If I do the power supply, my Thermaltake power supply is running at 31 as I check all the little diff different areas there. 31, 31, 29, so it's running around 29, 31. Uh, RAM sticks, RAM sticks are running at about 40, 39 to 40. The output air is running at 26 to 28, 29, varies a little bit, 26, 28, 29. Top of the cooling device is running at 28 also. Oh, jumping to 30. Now right now we're at idle and uh, if I go along the side of the cooling device to get closer to the actual chip, the CPU, I'm pulling up numbers of about 35 to 37 anywhere inside of the uh, along the sides here uh, where it attaches to the motherboard. So I'm going to assume that it's probably a more accurate feel for approximately what the temperature might be at the diode. So I've got 42 right here. So let's assume that uh, that's what the running temperature is, maybe 42 to 44, let's say, like this. So now here's the, here's the problem. I've got AMD's and ASUS's. Uh, benchmarking software, if you will, or tuning software. And I've been able to get to about 3,400 with not too much trouble, but I've had to make a few changes in the BIOS. Well, you guys have plenty of experience with all that, so I'll leave that alone. But uh, what was really interesting to me is, is that it only shows about 15 Celsius as the actual uh, temperature of the core. Now that's a huge difference between what I actually have and what it's showing. I mean, we're talking, it's, we're at 40, and that, that's, that's 25 degrees Celsius difference in what this is reporting, and that can go a long ways towards screwing you all up, because you think that you're operating within tolerances, and then what you find out is, is that if the motherboard and the CPU are reporting back to each other that this is what the, the temperatures are, then you can see how that would cause you some serious trouble down the road, and I think that's why when I was overclocking and I was well over uh, 3,600, that I was freezing up every well, it was random. I could go a whole day without freezing up, and then the next day it would freeze up five or six times. So uh, I did make a change in the, the BIOS, which basically I shut off the failsafe where uh, the motherboard will shut the CPU down if you get over, I think, 90 degrees Celsius. I just shut that completely off. I'm going to take my chances. So if I start a stress test, we can do a stress test here. And I'm going to select all the, the choices. And uh, let's see here, and hit start. 
Now I'm at stock right now. I don't have anything changed. I'm running everything at stock. And so now we're gonna go back to the status monitor. And so you can see that the CPUs are all running at 100, or each core I should say. And the temperature is jumping up to 23. So immediately we see a jump in temperature, but uh, the question is gonna be how high. That's what this is reporting, 23. Now we're gonna go back down and we're gonna do a little bit of measuring again inside the, the case. So I know you can't see that it's not very clear, it's not picking up the numbers really good, but that gives you kind of an idea right there. So right now we're benchmarking and you can see that we're topped out 100% uh, across each core. So let's go back down below. Oh, 24.2 or 24.4 according to this is uh, 75.92. That's what that's saying this is. Well, we know that's not going to be the case if we dig down deep. We're, at, we're already at 30 on the top of the Corsair now. 30 at the top of the Corsair. We're at 28, 29 at the fan. The fan, uh, the air being blown out. Uh, GPU, right where the processor is, is at 34 right now. And if we go kind of right, sneak in there where we can get closer to where the CPU is attached, it's at 42 right now. 42. 42. Forty-one, and then the the RAM seems to be holding right at uh, thirty-nine forty, somewhere in that range. Now the onboard GPU is running at forty-three, um, actually sometimes a little higher, it's as high as fifty. So I'm not sure if I can turn that completely off. I'm pretty sure I can. I need to check to see if that can be turned off, so it's not burning energy. No need for that. You know, I'm assuming that's the GPU that I'm pointing at there. Let you guys be the judge. So anyway, so that's what we've got right now. Now the test has been going on for, uh, for I don't know, three or four minutes. And uh, let's see. Test has been going on for two and a half minutes. And we still have 25.5. I don't think it's gonna get much higher than about 28 on this. The, the, the cooler seems to do a great job. When I did this test without the cooler, this got like into the high 40s, like 48, but it's off more than 25 C. Now at the higher levels, I don't know if that would equate to the same amount of um, uh, deviation because at the higher temps, I believe that the calculation changes a little bit from centigrade to Fahrenheit. So uh, again, I'll let you guys see wizards <laughs> figure that one out. But uh, currently it's, it's hanging at 25.5, even at 100% use. Now this is not obviously um, taxing the, the video card this is purely about the CPU at this point. And we're running at uh, 3114. This this CPU is uh, rated at 3.1. So that X45. So, and just as uh, for fun, here's your WEI for this particular setup. I've got processor and memory are both running at 7.4. Graphics are running at 7.3. And I got a hard drive at 5.9, which is going to be replaced by this Corsair 4 SATA 3. It's bit 60 gig. And I'm going to put just the basic Windows operating system on there along with the, the stuff I use the most. I have a few business pieces of software that I actually uh, use most that I'm going to try to take advantage of that drive with. Maybe get Office Word on there, uh, Excel. And I'm going to also see about uh, reinstalling Windows 7 Lite or a lighter version of it, getting rid of maybe some bloat that I would you know, likely not use very often. So I'm getting into learning what that might be. I'm sure I can cut off several gigs if I spend a little time on that. I think it tops out at 17 or 18 gigs. So it gives me about 40, 44 to monkey around with with other software. So I have Adobe's Creative Suite, that uh, the 5.5, which is quite large, and I'll probably have to limit what I'm gonna install on this drive and still have some room for uh, data transfer. So right now we haven't seen a change in uh, temperature. We're still at 26, 25.9 on uh, up here. So we go back down now after, I'm sure it's been at least five minutes. We've run just at five minutes on the test. So I think even at five minutes, we should be pretty much leveling off what kind of heat we're gonna expect. So we're gonna go right back at the Corsair. It's turning out a 30, so not really any change. 
uh, wind, uh, the fan, push fan, 27, 28. Along the side of the motherboard there, or the, or the unit, 39, 38 to 39. 40, I'm right at 40, and the RAM is still holding at 43. 40, 43. GPU, 34. Onboard GPU, 43, 48. Cooling, or the uh, PSU, power supply, running at 31. And the ambient temperature in the house, I don't know if I've mentioned that or not, is 75 degrees. Uh, I got the carpet, or I should say 24 centigrade. You can, again, do the switch. It's, I believe, 75 degrees. So a couple of, you know, uh, neutral types of places to check. I got 20, 24 degrees Celsius here, 23 degrees Celsius here. It's a little warmer over here where the fan, uh, the computer is, 24. Behind the computer, 25 and a half. So let's just say 25 is the ambient room temperature. So... There you have it. I'm not expecting that this is going to rise much because I've already done this once before and you're not going to see a big difference in the amount of heat. It's going to stay right at about 26, 25.9 to 26 through the whole test. And uh, to give you a, an idea of the difference, the, the stock fan that it came with, the stock fan that it came with is pretty weak. I mean, I can't believe that they can't do a little better job put an extra ten dollars worth of fan in there but uh, the stock fan even with the really miscalibrated uh, output of temperature it idled at about 22 and it got right up into the high 40s when I put it through the similar test so you got high 40s nearly 50 if I remember right it may have even hit 50 uh, that's again that's a 25 centigrade difference from what it actually is okay so do the math. If that's 75 degrees Celsius, again, if that's if the trade-off at the higher temp is right, we'd put 20, 75 Celsius. You're talking 167 Fahrenheit, running a stock chip at uh, at its maximum. So I may do another test once I've uh, geared it up, and see how it might change, and I could post that uh, the next time around. All right. That's it for this one. Questions, feel free to leave comments. If there's any errors in the way I'm doing this or in any ways that I might be able to improve the test, let me know and I'll make attempts to do that the next time around. Thanks for your help. Have a good day.